Welcome to Beyond Death, where we examine near-death experiences from people who say they died, visited the other side, and came back. Today's first NDE comes to us from Lisa, who describes angels protecting her while she waited on God to decide if she would have to return to Earth or would be allowed to continue to the other side. Let's get into it. In July of 2019, I was in a car accident. A relative and me were on our way to spend a few days in upstate New York. We were about halfway to our destination when another car hit us from behind, and my relative lost control of the car. Our car flew across two lanes of traffic and crashed head-on into the concrete barrier on the highway going 65 miles per hour. The last thing I remember was the car was about to crash into the concrete barrier and thinking we were going to die. Suddenly I was no longer in the car. I was in a black void. Everything. The walls, the ceiling, the floor was a mix of a blackish-gray color, and there was this really bright light behind the walls and ceiling that looked as if it was going to burst through at any moment. I have never seen anything like it. It is very hard to describe. I was all alone, and it was so quiet I could have heard a pin drop. It seems like I was there for a very long time waiting. I began to wonder where I was, and how did I get here? I look around, but there doesn't seem to be a way out, and there wasn't anyone there to ask. I realize that I don't have a body. I don't know how, but I just seem to be floating in midair. I am not scared. I am mostly just curious to find out where I am. I can see some movement in the distance. I can see a group of people in the far distance coming closer to me. When they get closer, I realize that they are angels. Suddenly, I am surrounded by at least a dozen angels. They are very short, maybe four feet tall and slender. They all have black shoulder-length hair and brown eyes. They are all wearing different colored gowns, some blue, red, pink, yellow, green, etc. Their faces are full of light. They stare at me. They look very stern. I would have been terrified except their eyes were very kind and loving. We are able to communicate with each other without talking. They are able to read my thoughts and answer my questions before I even finish a thought. I am able to also partially read their mind when they answer my questions, but only what they let me see. I didn't think at the time that it was strange that I can communicate telepathically with them. It seemed perfectly natural. Only one angel talks to me. He seems to be in charge. The rest of the angels just look kindly at me with love in their eyes. Suddenly I remember that I was in a car accident. I panic and wonder if I am dead. The angel tells me that I am not dead. He tells me not to be afraid. They are here to protect and take care of me. I am safe as long as I am with them. And they won't let anything bad happen to me. I can feel all of my anxiety completely melt away. I suddenly feel very safe, secure, and completely loved. I don't have a care in the world. I just feel so peaceful and happy that I wouldn't mind staying there forever. I ask the angel why I am here. We talk about the accident. I tell him that the car crashed into the barrier and ask him if I am going to die. He tells me that it hasn't been decided yet, and that's why I'm here. This is a waiting area. He turns and walks away a few feet. He looks up at someone I can't see and begins talking to them, but I can't hear what he is saying. He talks for a long time and occasionally pauses three or four times to turn around and look at me for a moment before continuing his conversation. Meanwhile, one of the other angels stands next to me and talks to me while this is going on. He tells me the first angel was talking to God about my situation. It hadn't been decided if I was to remain here or go back. He tells me not to worry. As long as I am here, I am safe. The angels will protect me and take care of me. If I have to go back, I shouldn't worry. The angels are always with me and would always protect and help me even if I can't see them. I could talk to them and ask for help anytime. When I asked him if I could stay here with them, he told me that it wasn't up to the angels to decide this. It was up to him, he said, pointing at someone I couldn't see. We must always do what he wants, because he knows what's best for us. 
I tell him that it feels like time has stopped and that I have been here for a very long time. The angel tells me that I am currently outside of time. When I ask him what he means, he tells me that the angels had to slow down time in order to save me. When I give him a look and ask him if he can do this, he nods and tells me that the angels can control time, temporarily slowing it down or speeding it up in order to do their job. He tells me that there is no time where we are, but if I go back only a short time will have passed since the accident. The first angel comes back and tells me that it has been decided that I can't stay here but have to go back. I suddenly find myself back in the car. The paramedic is standing over me. He tells me that I was in an accident. He asks me how I feel and if I am in any pain. Then he puts me in the ambulance. Up next, we have a rather interesting experience from Kathleen, who describes an experience in which she watched Jesus reach out from the heavens and call her father home. Let's get into it. On June 13, 2020, my father passed away in a nursing care center. I had no idea that my father was going to pass that day. I live over 200 miles away. At the time of his passing, I was in my backyard working with my husband building an extension patio. I was wide awake and it was the middle of the afternoon. I do not use drugs and had not been drinking. At the time my experience started, I had been shoveling gravel from the driveway into a wheelbarrow and rolling it to the back patio where my husband would then take over the wheelbarrow to roll it down a ramp into the lower patio. This event happened during a single trip from the front yard to the back. As I describe this experience, it is coming from two perspectives. I believe there was a spirit me that experienced and witnessed the transitional event of my father's passing from this world, and there was the human me. As the human me, I am reflecting back on the spiritual experience through a lens of analysis and trying to connect the dots to make sense of what happened. During this event, the human me was pushing a wheelbarrow and has no recollection of how I moved from point A to point B. The spirit me witnessed something else. As I was rolling the wheelbarrow past the maple tree, I was out of breath. So I stopped to take a quick break. I was standing about five feet from our maple tree. I recall looking up into the blue sky, feeling the warmth from the summer day. Something swept through me. A thought was spoken, what a beautiful summer day, while at the same time I was experiencing an emotion of absolute joy. A transition of some sort occurred at this point. I can only describe the feeling as pure joy sweeping through me from my back to my front. It was as if a giant smile was pasted across my face. I vaguely recall seeing some sort of golden apparition smiling back at me, a reflection. It was so quick. There was an upward lifting sensation, and I also recall the sensation of my eyes rolling up towards the top of my head. Something changed so seamlessly at this point that I did not even realize it changed. After this transition, my attention shifted to the maple tree. The tree I was standing five feet away from now appeared to be more than 50 feet away. The backyard appeared to be stretched or warped. Even at this moment, it never occurred to me that anything had changed or was abnormal. I didn't even question how I moved so far in an instant. There was a man with his backside facing me standing under the maple tree. At that time, I assumed was my husband. I felt a little agitated at him because I left him in the lower patio and I was wondering what he was doing under the tree. I looked down at his feet. He was wearing jeans, a baseball cap, and a blue t-shirt. He did not appear as an apparition or a ghost. He appeared like a young, full-bodied man. During this part of my experience, I did not realize this was my father. I was about to yell at him, what are you doing over there? But for some reason I did not. At another point during this experience, I recall wanting a closer look at something, and instantly, I was both far away and being right up to the backside of his neck as if I were only inches away. I saw every single hair sticking out between the strap of the baseball cap. I can describe it as being up close while at the same time being in the distance. I honestly don't know whose hair I was looking at. My husband at the time was still in the lower patio on the opposite end of the yard. The man under the tree was obviously not my husband. I moved on to what I can only describe as 
the next scene. I still perceived myself as working in the backyard. In my mind, I was heading back to the front. I noticed a light coming in on the left side of this man. I remember thinking to myself, oh, a light is coming in. But I wasn't really impressed or didn't understand the significance of it. But I was thinking, pretty light. Then it was if I was walking past the tree again or my attention was redirected back on the light. This time, I noticed something different about the light. Like, you don't see this every day. It was a soft, white, and misty light. It shimmered as if it contained sparkles of light. There was a white clarity that is difficult to describe. I also saw colors or hues of light pinks and blues. The light was bathing this man on his left side, and it was absolutely beautiful. I just stood there and said to myself, Wow, that is beautiful. I wish I had a camera. It may be worth noting that the sun at this time of day was on the right side of the house, while this incredibly beautiful light was coming in on the left. What happened next was the most profound part of my experience. I saw or perceived a robed arm stretching out from this light. I say perceived because for most of my experience, I can close my eyes and revisit all the vivid details, except with regards to this large arm stretching out of the light. I know I saw an arm at the time of my experience. But when I close my eyes to revisit the memory, I cannot see it except I remember the intense sparkle, twinkle that occurred when the arm made contact with the backside of my father's left shoulder. It was as if a seam had opened up in my backyard and light was pouring out of it. The being emanated an intense light that was the light, and was inside the light. The light was brilliant but soft. I did not see a face. At the same moment when the stretched out arm made contact with the backside of my father's left shoulder, a bright sparkle, twinkle occurred. At that exact same moment, I heard a voice or thought inside my head, saying the words with the most indescribable loving intensity. I love him. It was like an internal voice that was soft and whispering. I love him. It was not my thought, although it felt like it came through my mind. I understand now that I was being spoken to telepathically. The intense love being expressed through my heart while simultaneously hearing the thought. I love him was so intense. I felt what I would describe as being crippled in love and awe. It was both an emotional and physical experience. I felt as if I was tilting my head into my left shoulder in awe, like one would do when witnessing the most innocent and beautiful thing you could ever imagine. At the same time, my heart just swelled in love. I believe now that I was truly sharing my father's death experience in these moments. When the light being made contact with his left side, my heart on the left side literally swelled with love. I felt it as a physical sensation. I thought, responded, I would never say that. I understand now that my response was because I recognized this expression of love moving through me was not coming from me. I was confused. I spoke the truth. This love was so intense and parental in nature. I never felt that love before. I don't think it exists here on earth in that form. The closest thing that resembled that love was the love I experienced after giving birth to my children. But the feeling was magnified. Was I supposed to love like that? When those words, I would never say that came from my mind, I felt ashamed. I realized at that moment, my soul or spirit was bare and open. There were no boundaries and nothing was hidden. There was no fear, just a bit of shame. But the shame was quickly whisked away. At some point, I was no longer looking at my father. Maybe he wasn't there anymore and my full attention was on the light. I was mesmerized by the beauty, the colors, the love, and the awe. I saw what looked like soft dandelion seeds floating and reflecting the light. Although they could have been bugs in my backyard, I remember them dancing in the light. I also saw something more solid in the light. It was a brilliant gold color, and it had a more fluid and solid density to it. I was trying to figure out what it was. Instantly, as if I moved by thought, I recall being inside what I would describe as the center of a sphere of soft, white static-like energy like the television snow but finer. Windows were all around inside this sphere. The edges of these windows were like vignette, blended in this sphere of static white. 
The window in front was playing a high-definition, hyper-real movie. The man walking in this movie was absolutely the backside of my father walking towards an old house. He was still wearing jeans, a t-shirt, and a baseball cap. The man whose backside was facing me in my backyard was the same man that I was watching in this movie. This is the first time I recognized my father, and he was a younger version of himself. He was walking towards a house in green grass. The house had a whitish yellow wood siding. Although I never saw anyone else in this window but my father, I could hear a child giggling and I could hear people laughing. I connected emotionally with the giggling child. It felt like a memory, but it is not a memory I recollect. It felt like someone was chasing the child, like when you play tag. The windows on the sides of the sphere I recall were blotted out, black and white blurs. Whatever was playing in those windows I could not see. The next thing I recall was the sensation of putting or dropping the wheelbarrow down by the lower patio where I left my husband working. My physical vision was black, but being blotted back in quickly. There was a tug or a pull. It felt like soft sand was being poured into the top of my head, and it tickled the back of my eyes. When my physical vision was completely restored in seconds, I saw my husband in the lower patio where I had left him. My first thought was, if my husband is in the patio, who is under the tree? I sat down on the patio, and I kept staring at the tree. I said to myself, what just happened? Something happened. I couldn't put my finger on it but I know I saw someone under the tree. I still had this echo of the child giggling and a very strong sense of deja vu. I felt heavy, like a weighted burden. Gravity. I was trying to plug reality into it. I thought, did I mistake the barbecue grill for a person? Was I daydreaming? At that moment, I could not recollect the details, just fragments. I sat there puzzled. All I recalled at that moment was that I saw a man under the tree, but no one was there. There was only the essence of a lingering memory of a picnic and the giggling child. Eventually, I just shrugged it off and went back to work. Oddly, I was full of energy and I even outworked my husband. It was late in the evening, we decided to call it a day, and that is when I noticed my phone had been blowing up with messages from my brothers and sisters. I did not get to read them because at that same moment, my brother called me and said, how are you taking it? I told him that I did not know what he was referring to but that I am assuming our father has passed. We talked for a while. I took a shower and ate a small dinner. Later, I was alone and reflecting on the day. I read through the text messages and then thought about what I was doing when my father passed. Then it all came back to me everything and every detail. I remembered everything I described above. I was so elated, I started telling my husband, then other family members. All I kept saying was, I'm not special, but I saw dad go to heaven. I now have a million new questions about life. I don't know if this experience was just for me. I understand clearly that I am not any more special than anyone else, as we are all loved and all special. What I do know is that when other people shared their experiences, I felt validated. That I wasn't losing my mind or alone. There are many events and dreams in my life that occurred prior to this experience. I refer to them now as guideposts or synchronicities, and many that occurred after. This experience was significantly different because I was wide awake and it was the middle of the afternoon. I now pay close attention to everything in my life. I don't believe any of it is by accident or by coincidence. Notes from Beyond Death I have left links in the description to both of the experiences you have just heard. Lisa and Kathleen both have question and answer portions immediately following their experiences for anyone that wishes to do further research. If you have had a near-death experience that you would like to share on this channel, please send it into the email listed in the description. Until next time, stay blessed.